Happy Monday! It's Kimberly Beer here with Make It Happen Monday, one thing you can do this week to help market your business. And today I want to talk about structuring your URLs for SEO. So there's a couple of acronyms. You may or may not know what they mean, but we're going to dive into that as we go through today. Basically, what I'm going to teach you in today's Make It Happen Monday is how to name your web pages so Google can index them properly and bring you new customers. Now, before I dive into that, let me qualify Google bringing you new customers. For most of the businesses I work for, even the online ones, the ones that are strictly online, the majority of their successful marketing is going to come from in-person type events. So in other words, they've met someone and they refer them back to their website or they've become involved with a group of people or they host a group of people and then those people come back to the website and purchase. I think that in our culture we have been fed a myth that the way that people find us, the only way people find us, or the predominant way people find us, is through a search engine. And that is not the, the truth of the matter for most businesses. For most businesses, your foundation, your beginning, your sales, and I work with a lot of startups, your beginning, your sales, all of those things start with a more intimate personal transaction and then move to Google. That doesn't mean that you can neglect your SEO or that you shouldn't know these things. It's just that I want you to understand what I'm about to teach you shouldn't cause a panic in your life to go back and change everything you've done in the past, but I want you to be aware for the future moving forward, or if you're redoing your website, there are some things you can do that help Google be able to process your particular website a little bit better and put you higher up in the search terms or search return results for certain terms that apply to your website and your business. Um, and therefore get you a little bit more exposure, whether it's to people you've already met and who just can't remember your, your website domain name or new people who are searching for something that you're doing and now you're coming up higher in the results. All right, so let's dive into this. First of all, let me just give you a really quick explanation of how the Google search function works. So Google processes the your website or websites all over the internet through something called the Googlebot. And it goes through, and I, I always imagine this spidery looking thing, it goes through and indexes using words, content tags, attributes it finds, images, all kinds of things. Anything that's content on your website, anything that's typed up and not like physical code of some kind. When a user enters a query, so they're going to type it into the Google search engine, um, then Google returns matching pages that the Google bot has found that are relevant to that user's request. Over 200 factors are used in this determination as far as relevancy, and then the results are ranked and get fed back to the user. So the key point in all of this I need you to recognize is that you as a business owner um, who are placing your, your website out there, who even who are buying ads with Google via AdWords, you are not Google's primary customer. You're not the people that they want to keep pleased. The people that they want to please are their actual searchers. So those are the ones that it's really, really important for you to keep happy. So one of the things that customers or searchers struggle with is finding the right page. And one of the things that you can do as a business owner to help them, which, which coincidentally helps Google as well, is to name your pages with a mindful aspect of the content those pages contain so that when the Google bot comes along and crawls over it, it can go, oh yeah, this page and this content would be perfect for these search terms or when someone enters them, that's perfect for that person's search terms, search phrases. And here's another thing too, if you haven't listened to me in the past talk about SEO, we often talk as 
um, as marketing professionals, we use the word keyword. You got to have good keywords associated associated with your website, keywords associated with your business. The reality is, is we're kind of doing a misnomer there. You want to look in phrases. People often don't search for a single word. They search for a phrase. So we speak English. We communicate. Well, <laughs> we speak a language with multiple words. So we communicate through multiple words. And we don't change that um, tendency just because we're talking to a computer. We keep it as a matter of fact. And we use phrases in order to communicate into a search engine. So as you're going through this, as you're learning, as you're a new business owner and this stuff is starting to become prominent in your life and you have to kind of be aware that it even occurs, start paying attention to how you enter search lines. Pay attention to how you um, actually search for things. And I can guarantee you that you'll find yourself using phrases. And that's a key point to remember as well when you're going in to name your page. All right, so for those of you who've been waiting for bated breath for me to explain what a URL is and what SEO is, SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's basically making your page more friendly for things like the Googlebot to come by and be able to index. URLs are what are called uniform resource locators, and they are the address of a page on a website. So for example, um, here is a website about um, a equine gestalt coach who works with alcoholic women in recovery. And so there's a page on her website called Services for Alcoholic Women in Recovery. And it is physically named that. So if you look where the big red arrow is pointing, that is the URL or Uniform Resource Locator. It is what designates this particular page. It will always begin with your domain name. There will be a slash involved. And then it will have the actual name of the page. The actual name of the page may be followed by HTML, PHP, something like that, or it could be followed by nothing, as in this case. So it just designates this as the page. Well, part of that gets returned when you go back in and you look at a search on Google. You'll be able to see that that URL is right underneath the page title, which by the way, matches oftentimes the URL. So this is another place, it's sort of a reiteration um, of the title of the page or the subject of the page. So Google can better look and say, okay, well, the page is named that, the, the search terms are in the title, the search terms are in the page name, and I see it so many times in the body of the page or in the text of the page. There's a pretty good chance that this page is about services for alcoholic women in recovery. So if I am an alcoholic woman in recovery and I go to Google and I type that in, dependent on those 200 factors that I talked about earlier, this page will get returned as part of those results how high it gets returned or how relevant it is depends on how other pages out there are using that same search term, my location, my behaviors online, um, and then preferences that I have indicated to Google by my search habits over time. Where the page get re gets returned comes into all of those things plus all of those other things that are involved in those 200 items that determine how a page gets returned to a specific user. All right, so now that we understand what a URL is and we understand what the function it has inside of Google, let's take a look at how to structure yours. So here's a really basic little one, two, three, four of steps of how you do this. So first of all, you can rewrite existing or create new content that includes your phrases, your keyword phrases. Always, always, always remember that humans read your content, but robots do need to index it. And this is a great way because humans often don't read URLs. So it's a great way for you to talk directly to the robot without having to necessarily worry about a human going why that doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. 
so structure your heading tags as well so they're relevant to your page's content. So there's a hierarchy to this. If the page URL contains the keyword phrase, the title contains the keyword phrase, the keyword phrase is contained throughout the text, and it's also contained in what SEO likes to call subheaders, which are the H1 and H2 and H3 tags. Um, those, then, then that it becomes more and more relevant or more and more likely to contain the information that the searcher is searching for. All right, so if I haven't lost you so far, the first, the second step in all of this, and, I, and you can choose whether or not you wanna go back and rename the pages on your website. I don't necessarily suggest that. I suggest using this going forward, and then when you redesign or you work on a page, consider renaming it. All right, so, the second step here is to title or retitle the pages um, and change the URL if possible to include the phrases um, in your page name. So these are things people might be searching for. So there's examples here of okay, better, and best. So if I'm on my website and I'm marketing small business or marketing services to small business owners for marketing, I could have a page called marketing services HTML. And that's a kind of a common thing for most of us. A lot of our website pages already have that naming structure. I might think of it a little bit more of how people would search for that page. And if I did that and, and qualify it a little bit more to what we exactly do into marketing services for small business, that's better. Actually better than that would be make more sales with better marketing because that's what people are tend to wanna to search for is how to make more sales. Make more sales, market better, something along those lines. Those are things that people would actually probably type into a search engine. All right, there's a um, snippets and descriptions for each page using keywords and phrases that are specific to that page. Now I've included a link here because that's beyond what I wanna talk about today. And we'll, drum, we'll include these links in uh, the, the email that you received if you subscribe to Make It Happen Monday. If you don't subscribe, I would suggest at this point, because I'm gonna be on the slide for another couple of minutes, that you go ahead and screenshot this so that you're able to go ahead and get to those pages. Those are, by the way, pages that are sponsored on Google. So I have no, uh, no way to change. If they change their URL, I can't, I can't keep up with that. So you might wanna just Google whatever it is if you can't find them from these current links. Cause I have no idea how long in the future you're gonna be watching this. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Now, the another thing that you can do um, to kind of help with all of this as well is to rename your photos and use the alt tag with the same concept because there's another hit for your um, search terms for your search phrases. So here we have some examples of, of a typically way that an image is named, like image 2096, it's not a good thing. Selling with content marketing would be better or selling with content marketing um, with um, dashes and then the um, the root structure, the directory structure, by the way, that's where the slashes are at, that has marketing images in it. That's why that particular name is better. If you're trying to get a certain page on your website to rank for a certain um, keyword phrase, then you want to have an image um, named in that particular phrase. You also want to have your URL in that phrase. You want to have your page title in that phrase. You want to have subheaders with that phrase. And you want to have the phrase sprinkled here and there throughout the content of your page. Again, I'm going to remind you that you are writing your content on your website to impress two entities actual humans which have to make a decision to buy so you cannot neglect them and then robots who have to decide if your page is going to rank well or or is the applicable content to the human's search needs so you have this artificial intelligence involved in there that you kind of have to second guess but if you write everything to please that artificial intelligence your website will not appeal to humanity so just keep it in mind.
Other things that are really important to remember when it comes to um, SEO that can kind of destroy this whole system is to make sure your website is mobile friendly, actually mobile responsive. You can test it at Google. And then also make sure that your speed is, is up to par. Now, the speed test on the page that I'm sending you to here will give you a light system. A red light means it's not, a yellow light means it's okay, and a green light means that it's great. So I'm gonna tell you now, and for those of you who who absolutely must be perfect and check the boxes off, um, please let that go before you even go to this site. If, if you can get your website from a red to a yellow, most websites start out red, if you can get it from red to a yellow and you can't get to green, don't beat yourself up. Start with the mindset that yellow is a win. <laughs> so um, the yellow is an actual win in this case. All right, so that's it for today. I, I have included a couple of extra steps here for those of you who want to go out above and beyond. But what my challenge for you is this week is if you add something to your website, please go and use this concept of naming the page on your website so that it is better geared towards returning people through the artificial intelligence that looks at it for the specific search phrase that you want people to, you want to have um, it returned for. So when someone types it in, they're actually able to get your page up on Google. Google does crawl your website about every seven to 10 days. So uh, the changes aren't immediate. A lot of times you can't just change all of this stuff and then go back out to Google and voila, it's there. Um, so just be patient with it. This is a, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, websites are never completed. They're just works in progress that you continue to utilize and improve and make better and better and better. All right. So have a great week and I hope to see you next week or somewhere down the line in a class. Thank you so much.